The pair leads me through a series of unfamiliar doors and we emerge on the side of the building opposite of the festival grounds. Insulated by the heavy stone of the building, the noise from the crowd has faded to a murmur. Strange, I thought that most people would be beginning to leave by now. They're probably here to view the fireworks. Fireworks? Yes, apparently the school puts on quite a show. A lot of people come from town just to watch them. Lily's decision to leave the school grounds seems to make sense now. Hanako would, would probably have a hard time with the whole town descending onto the school, or ascending as the case may be. For the second time since arriving at Yamaku, I find myself walking down this road with Lily. Only now that I can barely hear the in incessant noise of the festival do I realize how loud it was. I can hear my ears ringing slightly in the still evening air as they recover from the day's assault on them. Hanako clings to Lily but still manages to guide her al along the road. That, and avoiding the occasional gaze from curious pedestrians, appears to completely sap her constitution. Sap her constitution? Hmm, I never heard that word used like this. She rarely raises her focus from the ground in front of her, nor does she utter a word. When I think of constitution, I think politically, you know? <laughs> Lily, on the other hand, maintains her prim and proper persona, just as she does in school. It's obvious she purposely puts effort in into her appearance, rather than hiding it as Hanako does. It's striking how different they are in their way of holding themselves outside of Yamaku's grounds. That said, it's obvious in both their cases that they do visibly change. Inside Yamaku, everyone is special, which negates the specialness of it. But once we venture outside the school gates, we are returned to the, steps, to the status of outsider and generic labels. Especially when we are still in school uniform, it's like hanging a sign around your neck, challenging people to figure out what's wrong with you. I'm surprised that so many of the students keep it on. Then again, with canes and wheelchairs common among the students, I guess it's not really that much of a giveaway. Or maybe I'm the only one that sees this as a stigma. Maybe you get used to it after a time like any other school uniform. <clears throat> the tea house seems fairly standard from the outside, just an ordinary building with typical signs decorating the entrance. It looks like the type of place you'd walk by without a thought, just another generic cafe in a sea of thousands. If Hanako hadn't steered Lily into the entrance, I would have continued on down the road without ever knowing that existed. That it existed. Inside the tea house, it takes one. It takes on a more traditional feel. Everything seems to have been made from the same lump of timber, from the counter and benches to the high-backed booths around the walls. <clears throat> but the most striking feature of the room is the lack of light. I think I can faintly hear something bubbling away in the background, but otherwise the room is silent. Without any direction, we simply wait near the entrance, politely uh, obeying the please wait to be seated sign. <clears throat> or is this place closed or something? Oh shit! <laughs> it's her. The sound of a chair falling over echoes throughout the empty room and a head shoots up from inside a booth. I wasn't asleep and welcome to the Shanghai! <laughs> Yuko, dressed in a pastel apron and clutching a menu, rushes to greet us. Her misaligned glasses and ruffled hair cast a suspicion on her previous statement. But whether she was asleep or not isn't the first question that leaps into, into my mind. You work here now? What happened to the library? What? Lily Hisayo. Welcome to the Shanghai. <laughs> oh my god, her crap glasses fell off! Yuka still waking up, jerks into a violent bow, dislodging her glasses in the process. Oh, yeah, my glasses! <laughs> As they pick up her spectacles off the floor, Lily offers an explanation. Yuka works here part time as well at the, as at the library. It's one of the reasons we like to come here. Yuka takes her glasses from her, from my hands, shakily putting them back on. Yes, that's right. Thanks. Shall I show you to your table? There is no one else here, so you can choose your table and order whatever you like, but there may be a delay as I will have to make it myself. 
It's alright, Yuko. Just a pot of black tea and a plate of sandwiches will be fine. Right, I'll get a, I'll get right onto that. Yuko hurries off to her to, to the back of the cafe, leaving us still standing at the entrance. She pushes the swinging half doors open before realizing that she hasn't seated us. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please sit wherever wherever you you'd like. I'll be right back. Following her advice, I lead Lily to the nearest booth as Hanako follows. As I begin to sit next to Lily, I realize how appropriate this place is for Hanako. The high-backed booths totally separate you from the rest of the room, and it doesn't look like it gets all that many customers. All the all the furniture of the furnishings, from the cushion on the benches to the condom condiment holders look dated but aren't overly worn. I wonder if Lily deliberately selects places like this to take Hanako. She seems like the type that would get, go to lengths to cater to Hanako's unique predicament. So, Asayo, I didn't know you played chess. Well, not very well, but I do know how to play. I suppose the obvious question would now be, who won? <laughs> Lily's innocent smile makes me hesitate. I don't really want to look like I'm lording my victory over Hanako. <laughs> Hisayo did. Yes, but uh, not by much. Damn, saying that lo out loud makes me feel like I've done something terrible. Well done, Hisayo. You've accomplished something I've only ever failed at. Er, thanks. I haven't played in ages, so it felt good to play again. I yes, it did. Hanako fidgets with her hair a little and looks away as she replies, but a small smile emerges. It's a little more extreme of a reaction than I expected, but still kind of cute in that in Hanako way. It throws me a, a little off guard, and only Yuko's cataclysmic re-entry shocked me back into conversation. Are you alright there, Yuko? Do you need a hand? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I have to do this properly. It's my job. <laughs> Concentration plays across her face while she stares at the tray in her hands, as if simply looking at, at its contents will hold them into, in place. <laughs> She's shaking, jeez. Sadly, this doesn't prove all that effective. The cups and saucers slowly dance around, occasionally clattering as they collide with one another. Taking great care, Yuko sets the tray down on the table with only the subtle, subtlest of crashes. There, see? Er, well done. Thank you, Yuko. Ha! <laughs> Yuko's head rockets downwards in her distinctive bow before answering. You're very welcome. Would you like to join us? There's something else I'd like to discuss about that recent... That about that recent order, if I may. Ah, that's right, Lily and Yuko were discussing a pile of books when I first met Hanako. <clears throat> Something about Lily helping with the braille. Ah, yes, we didn't get the chance to go through them, did we? Yuko hastily sits down next to Hanako. Apparently her dedication to this job only goes as far as her concentration. Once it is broken, she suddenly loses it. I'll be in the library tomorrow afternoon if, if you'd like to try again. Hold on, I, I don't know if I feel like I've uh, skipped something. Uh, apparently the decision to job only goes as far as her concentration once it's broken, she suddenly... Yeah, yeah, I think I've read it already. I don't know. I, normally I, I click on it like once I'm finished reading it, but I kind of clicked on it before all the words came out of my mouth, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like I did read it. But I just wanted to make sure, so... I'll be in the library tomorrow afternoon if you'd like to try again. That sounds perfect. I'll meet you there after classes. Um, Lily... Oh dear, that's right. Tomorrow is Monday. How could I have forgotten? I'm starting to feel a little left out of the loop here. Then again, that's to be expected. I have been here for barely a week, so it's impossible to know everyone's schedule. Well, perhaps we could come to some other arrangement. Yuko, will you be in the library later in the week? Hmm, maybe this is already overdue. And there are some things I need. This might be a problem. 
Lily ponders for a second before discovering the answer. I wonder might we be able to enlist the help of another, if need be. Um, to do what? You lost me quite some time ago. Being volunteered for something without even having the slightest idea what is going on isn't really my thing. And here I thought I had finally escaped the clutches of the student council and their repeated attempts to recruit me. <laughs> oh, of course, the other day I was helping Yuko sort the new braille books in the library. But Hanako and I usually go shopping on Monday afternoons. It's quieter on that day than on weekends. <clears throat> Last week we couldn't go because I was busy with the festival. I managed to slip away later in the week, but Hanako couldn't make it. Well, since I can't, I can't read Braille, I'm assuming you'd like me to go shopping with Hanako. Correct. You were a great help to me the other day. I think I can handle that. H Hanako, what do you think? If you wouldn't mind. Of course, of course not. I'm still not familiar with all the sto stories in the area, so it sounds like a good idea. Oh, uh, okay. Now that we have that arranged, shall we have some tea? It's now that it's now that I realize our tea has been sitting idly by all this time, getting no, getting no hotter. <laughs> it's my fault. Let me pour that that for you. Yugo reaches out with shaking hands, but I intercept her. She, she looks in no state to be handling hot liquids. Oh yeah, he does have a point. It's all right. I've got it. Since you've are already made the tea and sandwiches, you've fulfilled your waitress duties, right? I, I guess. Yuko relaxes a little, but still wa watches eagerly as I share out the assortment. Oh, shit! Uh, as I am- Oh, wait, it's the fireworks! I was like, is that thunder? As I am about to bite into the sandwich, a low, loud rumble can be heard along with a flash of light from outside. Ah, uh, I take it the show has started. <clears throat> Only now, looking outside, I realize that dusk has come and gone, leaving us in the peak of twilight. <clears throat> Spark, sparking tracers arc upwards, ready to explode in the floral shapes of fireworks. Let's go watch. Oh, so, sorry, Lily. Please don't miss the show on my account. From what I've heard, this isn't a bad location to watch them from. With the exception of Lily, we rush to the window of the small tree tea house to watch the show. I was about to say tree house. <laughs> the strobe of colored lights plays across Hanako and Yuko's smiling faces, and for a second I for forget to look out the window. In this totally new world, there are a few things that don't change. <clears throat> I think that's why the school makes such a fuss over the this festival. It's a chance to show the similarities between everyone. The show is over all too quickly. Fireworks are expensive, even for the most well-funded schools, okay? Before we return to our tea and sandwiches, Hanako turns to me. Um, thanks for today. And tomorrow. That's okay, I don't think that I could have faced those crowds either. On days like this, it's more relaxing to spend some time away from everyone, don't you think? Yeah. Anyway, we've been delaying this tea for far too long now. Let's get back. Sh sure. <clears throat> we return to the to the booth. We return to the booth and our light meal. That sounded impressive, bigger than last year's at least. Yeah, it was great. I've never seen them put on such a show. It gets better every year. <clears throat> I'm afraid, however, that during that time, the tea has gone cold. Oh. Oh no, let me make some more, this is my fault. <laughs> Calm down, Yuko, it's nobody's fault. I take a sip from my cup just to prove the point. This tea isn't too bad. Cool, anyway, it's like an iced tea. Really? Yes, really, if you add a bit of sugar, it's kind of nice. Are you sure? Ha. <laughs> I'm positive, now why don't you sit down and we'll finish this together? You can just microwave it, it's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Yuka doesn't seem convinced, but sits down regardless. She carefully measures out about five teaspoons of sugar and adds them to her tea. Er, I said a bit of sugar. <laughs> 
I know, but I like my tea sweet anyway. <clears throat> Curiously, I peer into her cup, but as expected, hardly any of the sugar dissolves in this cold liquid. She stirs it twice before upturning the, the cup and drinking the contents sh uh, sugar and all in a single mouthful. You're right, that's not bad at all. Er, good. I look back to Lily and Hanako, both of whom have finished their meal as I witness Yuko's personal personality in action. Not wanting to hold anyone up, I use her tactic and finish the remainder of my tea in a single swill. Well then, it seems we're all finished. You say swill or swig? I don't know what's the difference, but I know they kind of sound similar, so... I think swig is more like like just drinking it and swills like with like sips or something, I don't know. Well then it seems we're all finished. Should we head back now or do we want seconds? Yuko's expression shows that this is quite clearly not a good idea. What, she doesn't want to make more? <laughs> I think that it would be best if we go get, got back soon. We do have to get back before curfew after all. Oh, that is a good point. <clears throat> I'll meet you tomorrow, Yuko. I'll be looking forward to it, Lily. Goodbye, everyone. Well, we make our way out of the small tea house and into the dark of the night. Lily and Hanako once again take, take point, but under the cover of darkness, Hanako seems slightly less stressed than she did on the trip here. You move against the occasional group of people, emptying the, emptying the school grounds, but Hanako seems to lead us along a few minor roads, avoiding the bulk of the crowd. Outside the dorms, the school seems strangely quiet when compared to the noise of the day. Well then, thank you both for today. I think I learned a lot. You're almost you're most welcome, but I'm afraid that I must that I really must be going. Today's been a long day. That's right. Lily spent all of today on her feet, and I can imagine that walking outside of the school would be pretty tiring for her. I feel a pang of guilt as I remember that I was probably the only one in the school that got up around 10 this morning. Sure thing. Well, I'll see you both tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Hisayo. Night. The girls return to the dorm and I to mine. Actually, now that I consider it, today tired me out as well. <clears throat> Cutscene. Act 2, Hide and Seek Wow, I have to say- oh wow, okay. I have to say that was really serious. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe the Hanako arc is probably the most dramatic of them all. I mean, of course, I do know- I actually do know her backstory of like how those scars came up. Apparently, like, didn't didn't like wasn't she in a burning house and I think her parents probably died. I don't know if her parents are dead. I, I I think they might be, but they might not. But I do know that she got her scars from a horrific fire that consumed her house and she was in it and she survived, but her skin half her skin was burnt. So I do know about that. So I know it's gonna be kind of a tragic like little backstory of her. But I'm just wondering if it's gonna be like. One of those really serious stuff, but I mean, I, I liked it. It was pretty good. So, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, <clears throat> my alarm bell, my alarm blares into my ears, only to be swiftly silenced by my fist. Oh, what happened? 
My body switches into auto mode, carrying my subconscious self out of bed and into my uniform. Do you like slammed his alarm clock with his fists? <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> As always, my bottles of pills sit on my desk patiently, waiting for me to take them and pick out my daily dosage of medicine, seven, 17 pills a day. Jesus, 17. I mean, I knew he takes a lot, but, you know, I probably forgot the number, but yeah. Before I know it, I'm opening the door to class 3-3. Glad to see that I'm not the only one who seems to be a little hungover from festival week. Every face in the classroom looks gaunt. With the festival now over, it's as if everyone's life dreams have been achieved. With nothing left to live for, the students have relied on instincts alone to get them to class. <clears throat> or maybe I'm just reading the, too much into, the, into it. I slowly make my way to my seat, and it's only then that I realize why the room is so peaceful. The seats beside mine are blissfully empty. The world's loudest interpreter for the deaf has yet to arrive. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Just as I am about to sit down, the door flies open, revealing a re resplendent Misha. Drills bobbing from the dramatic entrance and arms stretched towards the sky. Yahoo! It's all over! <laughs> It would appear that not everyone is affected by the post-festival depression. <laughs> the rest of the class Claire and her obviously thinking the same thing I am. <laughs> Misha still frozen in the doorway with her arms still in the air nervously looks around. It's obvious that she senses the foul mood but can't work out exactly what to do. Suddenly she jerks forward. <clears throat> hey. As she stumbles into the classroom, she reveals Shizune, arms still extended from where she shoved Misha. <clears throat> Thanks for the entertainment, but shouldn't you two take your seats? Still slightly embarrassed, Misha takes a few seconds to realize she has to translate. Oh yeah, Shichan. She chan she says she's not happy with you ditching us last week. Well, I ditched you because, honestly, you both are, like, my least favorites, so... Of course I'd fucking ditch you both. We are really busy. Is that so? What about the stuff I already did for you two? <laughs> she says that only, only, count, only counts for council members. Since she declined, she doesn't owe you anything. Misha leans closer and whispers conspiratorially into my ear. Actually, I think she's just a little sore that you didn't spend the day with her. She's really thankful for your work at last week, though. Sensing that she is being talked about, Chizune slightly wraps her fingers on her desk until Misha turns around to face her. I can't understand any of the fast-paced signing that, that's, on, that's going on, but from Shizune's slightly embarrassed expression and Misha's poorly contained laughter, I can guess. While this exchange is happening, the door opens once again, but this time at a much more reasonable pace. Hanukkah quietly enters the room and pulls the door closed behind her. Peering out from under her hair, she quickly scans the classroom. Our eyes meet and she suddenly stiffens. stiffens. She closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, and then walks over to my desk. Good morning, Hisayo. Morning, Hanako. You're a little late, aren't you? I was talking to Lily. Uh, about today. Ah, so you've got, got her li list then. We can leave straight after classes in that case. Sure. I'm looking forward to it. Hanako briefly flashes her embarrassed smile at me, then hurries off to her seat. <clears throat> During classes, it becomes apparent that it's not only the students that are a little despotent after the festival. Mutao simply, simply gives us a list of exercises from the textbook and then sits behind his desk. I totally forget about the brief lunch period for a moment, such as the, ba such as the ban banality of the day. It's mind-numbing and everyone seems surprised when the bells signal the end of the lessons. 
As I am packing up my bags, Shizune and, and Misha flank and entrap me. Say, Hee-chan, it's still not too late to, to join up. There, there, are, there is a lot of post-festival paperwork for us to complete. Er, sorry, Misha, I've got plans. As if sensing the cue, Hanako appears behind me, holding a small bag and trying to avoid eye contact with the outside world. Misha's eyes open wide, then she bursts into laughter. Wahahaha, <laughs> you move you move fast, don't you, Ichan? You won't disturb your date any further. Wahahaha. <laughs> Behind the roaring Misha, I see Shizune taking far too little interest in the scene. I might be taking this the wrong way, but I think she's deliberately ignoring me. I feel a gentle tug on my shirt and turn to see Hanako's eyes fixed firmly on the floor. Let's got got ya. Sejune, Misha, I'll see you later. <laughs> and I'm still not interested in the council. Yeah, fuck the council. Spoil sport. <laughs> Misha and Shizune retreat into the hallway, happily signing to each other. Got all your stuff? Let's head off. <clears throat> Floods of students pour out of the school gates and onto the road into town. It's a little weird, it's almost a scene from any other high school, but the illusion fades because of the occasional wheelchair or missing limb. One thing I do notice is that nobody's, nobody is alone. And as Hanako and I pass through the gate, I notice that she closes the distance between us. Not enough to be considered close, but she certainly isn't at her usual, just a little far position. I guess we're not. Mm, excuse me. I guess we're not familiar enough for her to get as close as she does with Lily. However, even though she has moved a little clo closer to me physically, mentally she seems to have traveled a mile. Her hands clutched around the leather straps of her bag to the point of whitening her knuckles, her head down and her mouth purse closed. She almost looks like she's being walked to the principal's office for the first time. I tried to stifle a giggle at the thought, of, but, it's, but it is futile. What's the matter? I guess there's no point in hiding it. Sorry, for a second there, there looked like you were getting in trouble. What do you mean? I think you need to re relax a little. We're not going too far and it's only students around, right? Alright. It bothers me a little to see Hanako so worked up. And you do this every week, don't you? Yes, with Lily. Of course with Lily. I wonder... Uh, ha I wonder has she ever left the school without her? It doesn't seem like much at first glance, but Hanako's dependence on Lily is absurdly heavy. If she can't even handle leaving the school without her, how would she have managed to survive if the two had ever had never met? Would she have found some, someone else to latch onto, and what drew her to Lily? Was it her lack of eyesight, or was Lily just kind enough to lend a hand? I wonder if anyone would have fit the bill. <clears throat> Well, I'm here. Besides, we're not going far. It'll be over before you know it. Hanako's knuckles slowly regain the color as she tries to hide a smile, a, a small smile, but the effort of that seems to prevent further conversation. We travel side by side down the winding road towards the town. The crowd of students thins as we continue along the sidewalk. Faster students rush ahead, and the less mobile ones fall behind. We're Rarifying the crowd into nothingness. By the time we reach the convenience store, we are practically alone. Using me as a shield between herself and the attendant, Hanako moves through the narrow aisles, adding an assortment of items to her basket. Bread, milk, tea, thyme? What is that? What kind of convenience store sells herbs? Oh, okay. Then again, nothing about this town seems normal, which may not be such a bad thing in retrospect. Everything is so different and uncomfortable. Dwelling on such matters isn't really an option. <clears throat> when I think about that, it reminds me of Hanako. No matter how much you try, you can't escape her scars. They still interrupt my train of thought when I see them. As much as I don't want to admit it to myself, 
I think I'm forcing myself to try to ignore them. <coughs> Excuse me. Not that I am scar-free myself. The jagged line down my sternum will never completely fade away. I just have the luxury of being able to hide it easily. But in a way, both of our scars remind me that we're still... We're all in this place for a reason. Hanako throws one last item into her basket, then sheepishly... Sheepishly holds it out out to me, along with a few banknotes. Could you please? It takes me a second to understand what she's trying to say. <coughs> oh, you want me to pay for this? She nods but doesn't look up. I guess this task falls to Lily on the usual occasion. Sure, let me just grab a couple of things. Hastily, I grab a few essential items for myself and head for the counter with Hanako and close Tao. So the attendant gives me an indifferent nod as he scans in the items. I suppose just ignoring us in, in, is one way to deal with the an anomaly, anomalies of Yamaku. They must get a lot of students here, being the closest store to the school. The staff must all have their own way of dealing with us, or maybe they don't or maybe they don't. Maybe it's only me who thinks twice about my unique schoolmates. Our transaction, com our transaction complete, Kaneko and I head back out onto the street. The road is pretty much abandoned now. The students that were heading out have already left, and nobody has started returning just yet. And with only the school ahead on the road, there doesn't seem to be anyone else around. The emptiness certainly reflects on Hanako, her arms by her sides, each carrying a bag, her head no longer bowed and back to the upright position. <clears throat> it's almost as if she were enjoying this walk. So why all these weird things, mixed spice, why would you need that in school? I sometimes like to make food. Oh, she makes, she cooks stuff? That's nice. Well, yeah, so, so, do, so do I, but spices? That's a little more advanced, don't you think? N not really. Well, I think it's cool. You'll have to teach me one, one day. Sure. She doesn't seem all that sure, but pushing the point doesn't seem all that wise. At the very least, she seems a great deal happier than she did on the walk down here. That alone makes me a little happier. Outside the girls' dorm, Hanako and I sort out the grocery bags with our respective purchases. In comparison, my things look positively plain. I tell you, you're putting me to shame here. No, I'm, I'm not. I just... I'm only joking. I have a stack of homework that I skipped last week, so I must leave now. Will you be alright getting that to your room? Yeah. Sure, okay, then I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye We part ways and I return to my room. P piles of papers sit upon my desk begging to be completed. With the entire ruckus of the last week, I've barely had any time to catch up. <laughs> I tried to keep up with my studies while I was in the hospital, but some of the stuff I've never seen before, we, even back in my old school. Totally unprepared, I pop to the top of a, on, I pop the top on a can of drink and get to work. 